China, of course, plays a, a major role. It's a big country uh, and it is the biggest emitter today and since quite a number of years the biggest emitter of, of uh, greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide. China is responsible for roughly a third of the total emissions today and uh, they only have a fifth of the global population so they're well above global, global averages uh, also in, in the intensity of emissions. So there are major emitters. Uh, what is even more striking if, is when you look back to the increase uh, of emissions over the past 20-30 uh, years, where from 1990 China is responsible for uh, well over half of the uh, increase of emissions. If you look in, in the 2000s, it's two-thirds of the increase of global emissions is coming from China. So China is definitely, the modern China is definitely a major emitter and a major, um, plays a major role in the increasing uh, pressure on, on, on the global uh, climate. It's absolutely uh, essential. Um, there's no way around getting China, and India for that sake, um, on, on board. I mean, China is, in a sense, on board. Uh, China, the, the, the commitments that China has been, as a, as a developing country uh, in, in these legal terms, has been not to take on any absolute uh, commitments. So they take, have, have taken on relative com uh, commitments, that is, uh, CO2 emissions in relation to uh, economic growth. So um, that means uh, that with economic growth, China, within, within the commitments they have taken, they would still be allowed to increase their emissions. I mean, it's, it's of course very interesting to contrast what China is doing in China, what China is, what China is doing outside of China. When we talk about the climate convention and the work within the uh, global cli climate negotiations, then China is there representing China proper. So then we talk about what, what's happening in terms of emissions from, uh, from China itself, from sources within, this, within China. Those are major today, as I said before, it's a third of total emissions. What is even more problematic is that with the Belt and Road Initiative, China is investing in um, infrastructure development around the world, which is putting even more pressure on uh, climate. A big part of the Belt and Road Initiative uh, is investment in energy infrastructure. And the major part of Chinese investments abroad in energy infrastructure has been in coal power. The different numbers here um, also depends how far back you go in time when you calculate these numbers. But somewhere um, in the range of 50, 60 up to 80, 90 percent of the investments, out, uh, the output investments from China are coal power the building new coal power in other developing countries. Uh, because these investments um, are meant to be around for 30, 40 years. These are long-term investments. So the Chinese investments in coal power around the world risk pushing the world beyond the point of no return when it comes to uh, combating climate change. One way to, to consider this question would be to say, okay, what's green? Uh, because um, particularly if we look at the Belt and Road Initiative, it's, uh, it's supposed to be green, or that's what uh, President Xi Jinping claims. It's green, it's intelligent, it's, it's peaceful, it's forward-looking. Um, so what is green? Uh, if building coal power, investing in coal power around the world is green, then what is green? What does green mean? And uh, I actually asked that question to a panel of uh, Swedish and Chinese 
experts, um, um, top level experts. And the Chinese experts, uh, all of them said that could coal, well, the question, could coal power be green? Yeah, of course. The best coal power is, could be green. And whether it's green or not depends on the context in the recipient country. So what about Central Asia then? You do a lot of investments in Central Asia. Oh yeah, they have a lot of coal there, so coal is a good option. So there is a definitely a, a terms like green is not very carefully handled in China. It's more like a label uh, for something which, if you look, if you scratch the surface, there is nothing at all. We can't even compare uh, China and the United States. It's, it's, China is so much of a bigger problem uh, in terms of our abilities and opportunities to actually uh, solve the climate problem than the United States. The United States is very important as well. The United States need to reduce their emissions. Uh, but when it comes to adding emissions, um, then those emissions, added emissions in the world are coming from China, either in, inside of China or increasingly so from what Chinese investments around the world. The United States do not support any major energy investments around the world at all. And in fact, uh, the, the American economy is, is generally getting more and more efficient and, and emitting less carbon dioxide. And Trump doesn't have the power to really change that a lot because that change in the United States is, is happening on market terms. So the market is driving out uh, coal and uh, exchanging that for gas in the US case. And Re and renewables, but um, in in China, w with a completely different political economy, these um, dynamics are not are not in play at all. Well, absolutely, Ch China is not e immune to uh, um, to different types of, of pressures. Uh, Chinese leaders have all, always listened to and reacted to uh, different types of uh, messages or uh, you know, pressures uh, from abroad. If we go to EU, for example, China has been, been very, very good at playing different EU countries towards one another, uh, where each of the EU um, countries have, has tried to strike their own beneficial deals with China. And that's that type of, uh, in, in order to, to really put pressure on China, I think international community needs to, to, to shoulder up. Why it is that China exports and finances so much coal power? What's the driving forces behind that? why China is not exporting all the surplus green technology that they have. So why do they export the surplus brown technology? And as researchers, we need to do our homework a lot better in, 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 in mapping out the consequences of Chinese investments abroad. To really scratch the surface here again on what is green with the Belt and Road. Is there anything green? I think generally we tend to focus too much on policy. We think that, you know, only, had we only the global carbon tax, for example, or a global carbon trading system, um, or had we only you know, the right type of agreement in, 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 uh, in the UNFCCC, uh, in the climate negotiations, then everything will follow suit. I think we, we put too much trust in, in policy and we need to understand more the mechanisms behind those decisions and those decisions are happening outside of the scope of the uh, global climate negotiations. They're happening in boardrooms in Beijing and Shanghai.